with my executive order. We're going to take politics out of education. Tonight, we're taking a look at diversity, equity, and inclusion funding. Governor Kevin Stitt signed an executive order aiming to eliminate DEI funding in Oklahoma. As of today, state agencies can no longer fund certain DEI programs. But as Fox 25's Capitol reporter Peyton May reports, colleges and universities are also under attack by the governor for their policies as well. So don't worry about what they look like or how they identify. Let's just go help kids. With the governor's signature, a new executive order casting out DEI policies is now in place. His goal is to prevent state agencies from funding positions, departments, activities, and programs that promote diversity, equity, and inclusion. We, we need to stop sending six-figure salaries to DEI staff. It's not just the staff at his own agencies, but also at Oklahoma's colleges and universities that he's hoping to crack down on. That's going to shift the focus in education uh, back to educating our young people instead of uh, politics and indoctrination in our colleges and our universities. Under the same roof, one legislative black caucus member was thrown off by the message. Defunding discrimination. How can the, the, the very text the topic of his of his uh, uh, moment was was off kilter. Senator George Young is a supporter of celebrating more diversity in the classroom. It is the very essence of that educational system, our higher ed system, to give our people a new way of thinking, new way of seeing things, a more, if I can put it this way, diverse way of seeing things. Growing up in the 60s, Senator Young says he's seen firsthand why DEI became a much needed part of the conversation. DEI is a great way. It has served a great purpose. It continues to serve a purpose. It continues to do things to encourage folk that I feel like that my children and grandchildren will have an opportunity regardless, regardless regardless of, of whatever. Reporting for Fox 25 News, I'm Peyton May. The governor is requiring all state agencies and universities to report back on their DEI funding numbers by next May. Now moving on tonight. State Superintendent Ryan Walters applauded the governor's move today in a statement he said in part that DEI does not represent American values and he thanked the governor for taking what he called a strong step to protect Oklahomans from quote discriminatory programs and during his time as superintendent Ryan Walters has put a lot of attention on DEI programs earlier this year Walters requested Oklahoma colleges and universities report DEI spending. Are we sending our kids to higher ed institutions that are getting the training and skills necessary to get a job? Or are we allowing indoctrination to enter the classroom? So I, I want answers on that. I want full transparency of how our tax dollars are being spent. The state regents for higher education laid out the numbers in February covering the last 10 years. According to the state regents, more than $10 million was budgeted for DEI in the last fiscal year. The state contributed more than $3.6 million. That is 1% of the state investment in higher ed and less than 0.3% of all higher ed spending. This spring, the State Board of Education also approved a requirement for all K-12 schools to report on money spent on diversity programs. That means schools must report to OSDE and list any materials, staff, or contractors used for diversity, equity, and inclusion programs. Now, with DEI now on its way out the door at state universities and agencies, we're looking into what reaction the move's getting. Fox 25's Tom Ferguson joins us live from the Capitol with a closer look. So, Tom, what are you hearing tonight? Adam and Wendy, a couple of University of Oklahoma students said they were not surprised to hear this news from the Capitol. We stopped by campus to learn more. <laughs> Applause greeting the governor's executive action on DEI at the Capitol on Wednesday. He stressed a message against exclusivity and discrimination and one in favor of opportunity and merit. These OU sophomores had a different way of looking at things, though. I think it is a step backward, just like it said in the email. It doesn't seem like it really, I don't understand really why it's necessary to uh, take those programs away and those offices away. A statement from OU said it was, quote, disappointed in the governor's action, but would stand by its mission of being a place of belonging for all who attend. Ultimately, when, whenever you take away resources from inclusion programs, like it'll have a negative impact. It's hard to say right now what the extent of the impact will be until time plays out. This comes as the Iowa Board of Regents voted to scale back DEI at public universities there in November. Florida adopted laws defunding DEI at state universities back in May. Student Liam Hosty had this message for the Oklahoma governor. Do better for Oklahoma, I guess. You know, he probably doesn't care though.
and we'll have the governor's executive order plus OU's full statement posted on our website, OKCFox.com. Live at the Capitol, Tom Ferguson, Fox 25 News. Tom, thank you. Right after the governor's announcement today, State Senator Rob Standridge filed four bills aimed at ending DEI in Oklahoma universities and colleges. His bills prohibit the establishment of a DEI office for universities and bans funding for the program and call for the withholding of state funds if a university is found in violation and doesn't resolve it within 180 days. Senator Standridge also led an interim study over DEI back in October. I filed legislation to try to put an end to this, um, what I call and have been calling uh, DEI, which is a divisive uh, exclusion and indoctrination. I, I think that that's a better term for that, uh, terms for that acronym. Standridge even threatened to pull funding from schools, including OU and OSU, for their DEI policies. But those at the forefront of higher education, including Chancellor Allison Garrett, have shared concerns over how pulling DEI curriculum could impact accreditation. She says DEI requirements span from education to athletics. For example, Division I institutions have to complete an equity, diversity, and inclusion review at least once every four years. We have to prove that we are providing opportunities for civic engagement in a diverse multicultural society and globally connected world. We have to prove that we are providing inclusive and equitable treatment of diverse populations. Garrett says that students who don't go to an accredited university could miss out on financial aid. A new report says diversity, equity and inclusion in the workplace may be losing momentum with companies facing external pressure from lawsuits and court rulings. The National Desk's Angela Brown tells us DEI jobs are on the chopping block. The numbers here paint a picture. In 2020, after the murder of George Floyd and the call for racial justice, DEI related jobs rose by 55 percent. But by the end of 2022, DEI jobs were being cut at a higher rate as conservatives filed lawsuits. Momentum surrounding DEI policies may be slowing. This new report from Paradigm, a DEI consulting company, found 54% of companies still have a budget for DEI. That's down four points from 2022. Robert Scott helps connect companies with tech leaders of color. If uh, employers have the intention of having a diverse workforce, they will find ways to have a diverse workforce. External pressure from lawsuits may be partly to blame. Major players like Amazon sued over a program offering an extra 10,000 to black or Latino owned delivery service contractors. Fearless Fund, a tiny player in the venture capital world, sued for discrimination for $20,000 grants to small businesses led by black women. The reason why the program exists is due to the racial disparities that exist in venture capital. This summer, 13 GOP state attorneys general sent this letter urging the leaders of Fortune 100 companies to take a look at their DEI programs. Johanna Jones is the CEO of Information Technology Senior Management Forum. We're watching the tea leaves um, thus far with our corporate partners. We haven't seen any sweeping changes. Reporting in Washington, D.C., I'm Angela Brown. And that was your big story breakdown. You can find more on today's executive order and DEI funding on OKCFox.com. And if you missed any part of the big story breakdown, you'll find it all on our YouTube channel. Scan the QR code on your screen or search OKCFox.